Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm telling this story. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a story time. Now I feel like I should have been doing story time videos for the longest time, but I just, I just couldn't. And now I'm ready to share some things that I haven't shared that I think you'll find really interesting. So I thought we'd kick things off with the story time of when I was cheated on, which this was like well over a year ago now, but I kind of like briefly spoke about it in like the breakup video, but I didn't really explain what happened. So this isn't shade to that guy because I just feel like, I mean, I'll explain in this video why I think he did it and why, what my theory is, but that there's like no shade, no tea. It's just, this is the story of me being cheated on basically. So to give you a bit of background on the relationship, we were like talking for a while and then I wasn't very keen on getting in a relationship. I'd been in like a three year relationship. I'd had like a year single and I was just like not really, not that I was like not looking for anything. I was just, you know, I was, I was being a strong independent woman. You know, when you're in that phase where it's like, I just want to be me. That's what I used to say whenever like there'd be any kind of confrontation or people ask me out. Sorry, I kind of just want to be me right now. I'm just loving being me. And um, yeah, so like we were talking and then we ended up in a relationship, which is like, you know, it was it was fine, but it's so funny how at the time you really just don't see the red flags. Like it was not, not that it was like a toxic relationship, it really wasn't, but I was like giving a lot more than him. I'm just editing and I just wanna like clarify that by this, I don't mean like monetary things like at all. I mean like the amount of effort I was putting in, you know, like there would be double standards like from his side and it would just be like, you know, I would be kind of making way more of an effort and things like that. So I don't mean at all that like I paid for more because that's kind of irrelevant like that, you know, isn't anything to do with this situation. I mean more kind of like, I'd be the one putting myself out for him and it wouldn't be reciprocated. You know, you know when it's just not balanced. So yeah, if this was about four months in, like officially, I guess. So we started talking in like October, I think it was, and then we broke up in like April. So we weren't actually together that long. Obviously like that's from like li literally like the first time we started speaking. So we were together probably for about four months. So not that long. But by that time he was like living with me and all things like that. It's like very hard when you're so independent and then like they kind of come into your life and it's like, I don't know, it's really hard to set boundaries. Like it was just, he ended up, you know, living with me, which was like fine at the time. So, come to like, it was my birthday. So things have started to be a bit like, mm, you know, you know when things just aren't quite going right. So I was planning my birthday dinner and there was like guys I wanted to invite, obviously, because I have friends that are guys. And he, we were in Geneva airport and he had this whole thing of like, if they're coming to your birthday, I'm not coming. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? Like, what? Like, I would never be like that. He had so many friends that were girls. He would always be messaging his, like, friend, like, girlfriends. And I would never say a thing about it because it was like, oh, they're school friends. Or, like, you know, we went to different schools. We lived about an hour away. So it's not like I knew his friends. And he went to a mixed school and I went to a girls' school. So, obviously, he's going to have way more girlfriends than I do guy friends. But, you know, irrelevant. There shouldn't be a problem with you being friends with people of like opposite gender. It shouldn't be an issue. So we'd had that whole thing of like, he didn't want like me inviting these particular guys to my birthday, as in it was like every guy. And he was like, fine, just like if they're coming, I just won't come to your birthday dinner. And I was like, dude, like it's my birthday. I remember then like this was like in the lounge and I FaceTimed my mom when I was in the lounge. And I was like, this isn't working. This isn't gonna happen. You know, there's no longevity to this relationship because this is not cool. Um, so we got on the plane, we spoke about it, and it just got kind of worse. So I didn't end up having a birthday dinner, which was really sad. Um, yeah. So fast forward to like a few weeks time, uh, and I had just got the keys to my new place in London. So I got somewhere just for like the summer, I got a short term rental. I was so excited to be back in London. Like for me, everything just felt so amazing. Work was going so well. I got this place, I was buzzing. And it was the night we got, well, I say we, it was all in my name. The night I'd got the keys and we had like an airbed blown up and stuff and then we were chilling and 
I got a message from this girl. Now, bear in mind, I'm like, there's nothing wrong in this relationship, really. Like, nothing deep, no... Do you know what I mean? I didn't have any concerns. I trusted him. And I got this message from this girl who went to... So, basically, he used to live near me, and then he moved away. And it was a girl from the school that he used to go to. So, we didn't know each other, but, you know, we had mutual friends. And she was like, hey, um, I don't want to be that guy, but she was like, you know, I'm a girl's girl, and if I was you, I would want to know. So, she would said that your boyfriend has been messaging me, like inappropriately she was like it's not that bad she's like i don't want to like freak you out she's like but i wouldn't like it if my boyfriend was talking to someone the way your boyfriend's talking to me and she sent a screenshot and the screenshot was basically a flirty message and i was like hmm okay she was like i just you know i just want to let you know because maybe you should like check his phone she's like Cause if he's talking to me like that then you know and i was like mm no like, I was like that's kind of do you know what I mean I was like I don't want to think I have no kind of concerns and then I was like okay well I'll just have a look because this was on insta dm that he'd messaged her so I went in his insta dms and there was nothing apart from this one conversation with this girl who um like she'd sent him pictures and then he'd replied saying like send me things like this on snapchat with like the Heidi monkey eyes and it, I was a bit like mm. And I was like, okay, like, whatever, it's, do you know what I mean? It's not that, that's, that could be anything. It could be like, I didn't know who she was. So this was when he was in the bathroom. So he came back out of the bathroom and I was kind of just chilling there thinking, and I was like looking up this girl on Instagram and she followed me. And it turns out that this girl was a fan. So I was like, okay, okay, um, don't know what to think to this. So he went to sleep and I just, you know when you just know, like as soon as something clicks and like you have that horrible feeling in your gut and I was like, I'm not gonna be able to, you know, not think about this unless I kind of find out. So I'm I'm not the type of girlfriend to like go through my boyfriend's phone like at all. But like I had this inkling and this girl had messaged me and I was like, right, okay, if there's ever a time, I was like, this is either gonna clear things up and it's just gonna be like a move on thing or, Alternatively, I'm gonna find out something I don't wanna know and it's gonna like be something that I'd rather find out now than two years down the line. So I went to Snapchat and every, like I looked down and every name was a girl's name. And I'm obviously, I'm just like, oh, they're his school friends. So I found this girl's name from Snapchat. I went on and um, there was basically like conversations that were just disgusting like horrible, like sexting, all things like that. And um, like, and all like her messaging being, him being like, um, you know, uh, thank you so much for being there for me. I don't know what I'd do without you and all things like that. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I was like, right. So I go down onto the next conversation and there are nude pictures saved in the chat. I go down to the next chat same thing i go down to the next chat and it's like more sexting um and there was probably about seven conversations like this so i'm like freaking out bear in mind this night we just like celebrated the fact that i got the keys to a flat in london which for me was like so significant it was like i'm like you know it's another chapter of my life that i was so excited about and something i was sharing with him so that was kind of rubbish timing so yeah, I woke him up and I was like, hey, um, I wanna talk to you about something. And he was like, what? And I was like, open your Snapchat. And he was like, why? I was like, open, I was like, go on your Snapchat. And he was like, right. So he opens his Snapchat and holds his phone. I was like, right, swipe onto that conversation. And he was like, why? And I was like, please, I was like, please do it. I was like, you know, if I gave you, I was like, you could, uh, if I gave you my phone, go through whatever you want. You're not gonna see one thing you don't wanna see. So let me, we can do my phone after if you want. <laughs> like, I was like not having any of it. So he swipes over and obviously when you say things in a conversation, you have to pull up to see it. So there was nothing there. He was like, what are you looking for? And I swiped up on the conversation and there sat three like nude photos of this girl. And, um, he was like, uh, like didn't know what to say. And he kind of just looked at me and I was like, so what's this then? And he was like, it's not what it looks like. I was like, okay, so what is it? And he was like, she just sent me them. And I was like, all right. So I was like, okay, go on to the next conversation. He did. And I swiped up 
same thing. I was like, so did this girl do that as well? I was like, oh my gosh, like, you're a lucky guy. And he was just a bit like, didn't know whether to like, you know, but he showed no emotion. Like he was just a bit like, oh, you know, crap, I've been caught. And like, I'm thinking like, if this was me and this was the person that I really cared about, I'd be like crying right now, like actually crying. So not that I would ever cheat on anyone anyway, but you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, weird. Um, and then I was like, right, okay, I'm like, I had given this guy so much, like I had, you know, let him into my home. Like that was a lot. So I, this story gets really weird, not weird, but like, mm, I really decided in this moment to stand up for myself. So I said to him, I was like, okay, well, I'm not staying here tonight. I don't want to be in a room with you. Um, I'm going to leave and you need to leave as well. And he was like, what, but, but, but what, what? I was like, you know, please, will you get your stuff and just go? And he's like, but I have nowhere to go. And I was like, okay, well, you need to figure it out because I'm not being here with you and I'm I'm going home. Um, so I started to pack my things up and he was like, but I don't have anywhere to put my things because obviously Emily had carried them all the way here in her suitcase because Emily does everything. So I'm like, pick the Primark bag up, put your stuff in it and please leave. Um, bear in mind, I'm not like raising my voice at this point. I don't, I don't argue, you know? For me, it, it's very black or white. You have cheated on me, you have broke my trust please leave my home. <laughs> so he's like, like, what am I gonna do? So I'm packing my stuff up, I leave, and he's like following me, and I'm like, can you please just not follow me? So he followed me all the way back from the place that I had my flat, which, which was kind of like, mm, it was like in London, and he followed me out to East London. So all the way back to Stratford Station. So this was like late at night. I think this must have been like half past two in the morning. So the night tube was on, thank gosh it was like a Friday night and I got on the central line to Stratford. Um, so and my car was parked there because I'd driven in that day. So I, like he's still following me at this point. I'm saying to him, please will you just leave me alone? I don't want you anywhere near me. You know, so I get in my car, put my stuff in it. And as I'm reversing my car, he's like stood at my window and I'm like freaking out. So I crash my car, like no joke, hit the back of my car. It's still got a dent in it now because I still haven't fixed it. I told everyone that it got jabbed with a screwdriver by like a, by a person who I didn't know. No, I crashed it into a pole when my ex-boyfriend was like banging on my window trying to get me to stop the car. I was only going like literally five miles an hour, so it was fine. So I pull off, I drive home, and on the way home, I call my mom on my, you know, like I use Siri, obviously didn't use my phone. And she's like, what's wrong? Cause this is like 2 a.m. And I'm like, I'm coming home. Can you leave the door unlocked? I'm coming back to your house, not to my house. And she was like, what's happened? What's wrong? And I was like, I'll tell you when I'm home. Please just, you know, don't wait up for me, but please leave the door open. She was like, okay, fine, no problem. So I get home at like, I mean, it took me like an hour and 40 to get home. So I got home at like, it was almost 4 a.m. So I get home, my mum is of course awake because this is my mum. And she's like, what's happened? What's gone on? And I just kind of like, I cried, I broke down. And I was like, look, he's just been lying to me the whole time. Like, I've just found this out. I was like, what? how am I so stupid? Like I've given this guy so much, like so much. And it's this was the guy that like, you know when you have like your first crush when you're younger, he was like my first crush. So it was like, for goodness sake, like all these years I've been like, oh, like what if I end up with him? And I did, and then that happened. So it hurt a little bit more. So yeah, my mom was like absolutely gobsmacked and everyone was, everyone was like, what? And then, but actually his friends weren't, his friends really weren't shocked. So we, I go to bed, I was like calling one of my friends at like 4 a.m. cause I was just like, what the heck, <laughs> you know? And I was really upset, but it, it, that didn't last long, you know, that passed very quickly. So I wake up the next morning, I'm still feeling a bit rubbish, but I'm in the mood where I'm like, right, let's get this guy gone because I don't want to do this. So he had moved all his belongings into my house. Like my loft was full of his crap. My bedroom, I'd gone and bought wardrobes just for him to put his clothes in. Like, you know, there was a lot of his stuff. So I went back to my house, my mum, and I put it all in bin bags and it was all in my garage. So he then like, I don't even know what he did that night, but then my mum gets a text at, well, she, he rang her and she like let it ring to answer phone. And she get a text from him saying, hey, I've just got into the station. Is there any chance you'd be able to pick me up, please? Like, what? What? You've just, like, I've just found out you've been cheating on me for like the whole relationship. And then you text my mum asking for a lift? What? So 
Uh, he, my mum basically responds and is like, hey, um, I really don't think that's the right thing to do. She was like, you know, I don't want to get involved in your business, but I'm obviously Emily's mum. Uh, so we hear nothing and then he turns up at my house. So I think he must have paid for a taxi. I don't really know. So he like knocks on the door and I'm in the kitchen and I am like sat there just basically getting rid of all of the joint things. Like any pictures in the house that he was in, I was just like, I'm just not even doing this. So I was getting rid of it all. And my mom's like, Emily, she's upset. She's like, Emily, he's at the door. And I'm like, mom, I know I was being quiet. So he didn't have to answer the door. So now he's heard her. So I had to answer the door, which was so frustrating. I was doing the whole like, you know, ignore the person, then they go away. But apparently that's not what you do. So I go to the front door. Now bear in mind, I don't really do confrontation. Like I don't do arguing. It's just not my thing. So I answer the door. I'm like, hey, <laughs> he was like, can we talk? And I'm like, what about? He was like, us. I'm like, what about us? He was like, what well, about, you know, about this? I was like, you know, he's like, about us. I'm like, but what us? I've just found out you've been cheating on me for the whole relationship. So I don't really think there's anything to talk about. I was like, you know, you've cheated on me. So I broke up with you. I was like, that's kind of how this works. And um, he just was like really sad. And then, but I don't really think he actually was sad. He just like acting sad. So I invited him in because he was like, I have nowhere else to go. So he came in, sat in my living room, literally sat there, did not talk. Like, did not say a thing. And I'm like, mm, okay, okay. So he then goes upstairs. He's like, I'm just gonna go use the bathroom. So he goes upstairs and like, my mom's like, he walk, runs up the stairs. My mom walks out of the kitchen and looks at me in the living room because he's about to find out that none of his stuff is there anymore. And I hear him open the wardrobe door and just stop. And then I hear it like slam shut. And my mom's looking at me like, and I'm like enjoying it at this point. I'm like, yeah, that's what you get. Like that's so, you don't treat people like that. So it kind of comes downstairs and she stands in like the door. My mom's like gone away by now. I think she went to the tip actually. And then she, he kind of stands in the doorway and he's like, where's all my stuff? And then I was like, I just stand up and walk to the garage door and I open the garage door and he follows me and looks and he's just like, what what you know says some like swear words I'm guessing I can't even remember and I was just like look I was like I need you I want this picked up today and that's the end of the story so he was like I can't I'm not gonna be able to do that and I was like well I want it gone um please <laughs> like I don't want your stuff in my house so basically his dad agreed to have his stuff so his friend came round and helped him lift like pack it all up my older sister came round and we packed it all up into my car and his best friend's car and took it to his dad's house and his best friend like was like apologizing to me he's like i'm so sorry emily like i'm so sorry like bear in mind the, the guy hadn't said sorry to me once he just kind of not really said much and then his best friend comes around and is like i'm so sorry like on his behalf so he was like literally he was acting like a spoiled brat like he got found out like what do you think was gonna happen so yeah we drop it all off at his dad's house and i'm like bye um, and then we were kind of talking on and off over like the next few weeks and I was like, oh, okay, you know, he's, I was talking to my friends and they were like, look, Emily, he is a young guy. He's never been in a proper relationship before. You know, you're a lot more kind of mature than him. Maybe, you know, he just made a bad judgment. And I'm like, mm, okay. So I'm like, not gonna shut him out my life. We were like talking still and then he came and like, I was like, okay, well you can stay around tonight because we were watching a movie and I was like, you know, maybe we can rebuild this. And so he goes downstairs to get a drink and he like left his phone on the side, which he never used to do, which defo should have been a red flag. I was like, okay, cool. You know, I was like, I'll just have a look because you know. And I went to Snapchat, another girl, more nudes, like different girl. And I was like, for goodness sake. And then like, as he was walking up the stairs, I was like, are you actually joking? He was like, what now? I was like, there's more freaking nudes on your phone. And he was just like, I was like, you need to leave. So I like, I don't even remember what happened that night. Oh yeah, no, I dropped him home. So I dropped him home and then I didn't say anything. I literally dropped him off. So yeah, I drop him home and then the next day he like he'd left something at my house. So I went round to his dad's house, uh, gave him his stuff, and he went to get in my car and it was locked. He's like, Can you unlock it? I was like, No, can I just give you your stuff? And he was like, What do you mean? I was like, This is it. I was like, This isn't a thing. You know, he said some things in between, like when we I think it was like two weeks, that were really out of order, things that I'm not gonna say in this video because 
you know, you can probably think some of the things he said. And I was just like, you know, that's not okay. You can't say things like that to people. Um, you know, I don't want to be with someone. Like, what did I say? I was like, there was this thing. I was like, you know, there's like billions of people in the world and I'm not going to settle for someone that doesn't want me to be their everything. And I just feel like that's so important because you really need to know your worth as a person. Like, I gave him so much and he didn't give me equal back and he didn't treat me with respect because he cheated on me I was like so I'm sorry but I'm just not gonna do that and he literally threw the biggest tantrum like I pulled away and he was stood behind the car going like what are you five years old like what um and that is I'm pretty sure that's the last time I saw him that is the last time I saw him and no joke after that day I was blocked on everything he has not tried to contact me oh no he contacted me once when I hit 800,000 subscribers and he messaged me like oh look I was at 800,000 and I was like and then he blocked me again and like he has not like he literally cut me off we have not spoken apart from that day he messaged me about the 800,000 subscribers and yeah so obviously I really did not mean that much to him if he was able just to like cut me off like that which I thought was really weird but I was kind of at the point where the relationship was like it was going to be over soon anyway and their kind of cheating gave me a reason to get out of it without feeling you know guilty like he was living with me so like if I was going to turn around and be like I don't want to be with you anymore can you leave please like that would have been really mean not that that's a reason to stay with someone but I would have felt like a lot of pressure on me if I did that like a lot of guilt so yeah I was kind of happy in a way that I had a reason to be like you know please leave um because it just I don't even know how to explain it like it was just off balance like I said so it was yeah I don't know I got I think it took me like two weeks and I was just like okay cool like you know that happened but my mum always describes it as an itch that I needed to scratch because like I said he was the guy that I'd had a thing for since I was literally 12 like 12 years old so my mum was like it you needed to like get it out your system you been there you dated him it didn't work he broke your heart so you know time to move on and flourish like I wouldn't even say broke uh, maybe you did break my heart I don't know I mean I don't think I loved him like the breakdown of like my first relationship hurt a hell of a lot more than that and like I kind of don't even really count that as a relationship because it really wasn't it was like we were literally together for like four months it was still like you know basically we were like dating it wasn't like a proper relationship so yeah I mean that's the story time of me getting cheated on kind of sucks it's kind of funny looking back on like the drama and you know, props to my mom for being so amazing and helping me clear his rubbish out and to my big sister for helping me drive all his belongings to his father's house. So yeah, that is the that is the tea on that situation. I mean, I don't hold it against him. I don't resent him. In my opinion and from like people that I've spoken to about it, because obviously it's good to like talk these things through with like your friends and family and things. Uh, I just believe that he was just, you know, very young and he was in a very different situation to myself. Like I had been working for myself since I was 17. So I've grown up like a lot quicker. And I just think we were in very different phases of life and he shouldn't have been in a relationship. If he wants to go and, you know, talk to millions of girls on Snapchat, then just, dude, you go do that. Just don't be in a relationship while she do it. Uh, that is my theory. I just think he was just, you know, too young and immature to be in a relationship or like dating so yeah that is the story i do hope you enjoyed that please give it a massive thumbs up if you did if you have any other story times you want to hear about then please do let me know in the comments and i will see you next time bye